Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of Todster's Magical Mystery Review. I'm your host Todster and today I'm going to be taking a look at Sentimental Journey by Ringo Starr. Uh, it came out 27th of March 1970 on Apple Records and yeah this is Ringo's first solo album. Uh, not only that but it was also the, um, the first uh, proper studio musical Beatles solo album. Um, I guess the previous to that, uh, John and George put put out albums by themselves, but they were either incidental or experimental. But uh, yeah, this is the first proper solo album, and uh, yeah, so so Ringo, um, I guess once uh, once the once the Beatles was was finished, I guess Ringo, uh, I believe Ringo. Um, spent many days in the back of the garden, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what was he going to do, you know, since he's got no band. And so, um, and so he thought of uh, making a standards album, uh, make an album full of, you know, the old standards that, uh, that um, he grew up listening with his, with his parents. And, you know, that's, uh, you know, when it, when it came out, he said, uh, you know, I did this for, for my parents. And so, um, and so he bought, um, and so he got together with uh, George Martin, who uh, produced it and uh, also brought uh, his orchestra to back him up. And um, he also brought along a whole bunch of, um, whole bunch of people to arrange each song. So let's take a look at, let's take a look at the album. So we start off with the first song, uh, the title song, Sentimental Journey. Now this. Uh, was popularized popularized by uh, Doris Day uh, back in 1945, I think, and this this version was arranged by Richard Perry, who went on to produce uh, went on to help out uh, Ringo's uh, big breakthrough uh, with the uh, when he produced uh, producing the Ringo album and uh, Good Night in Vienna. Good Night Vienna. It's okay. It's a bit of a slow, sloppy number, in, to my ears. But then we go into the old Cor Cole Porter song, "Night and Day." Now, it's, to me, it's it's the best song on the album, in my opinion, and I just like the way how it swings, baby. And um, then we go into "Whispering Grass." Don't tell the trees. Uh, first was a hit by the Ink Spots. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's a bit. Bit of a so-so song, and then we go into "Bye Bye Blackbird," the old twenties uh, standard, uh, arranged by uh, Morris Gibb from the Bee Gees, uh, which uh, I believe um, uh, Ringo and Morris were neighbors by that by that time. Yeah, I I yeah I like this uh, I like this one. Very upbeat, very nice. You know, compared to what um, what Paul did. Uh, um, Many many years later, on his own stand, standards album, which uh, we'll get into uh, once we get there. Um, yeah, but um, I I like this I like Ringo's version uh, uh, better. And then we go into "I'm a Fool to Care," the old uh, the old uh, Les Paul Mary Ford tune. Yeah, this was arranged by uh, uh, Klaus Vormann, the old uh, one of the old uh, Hamburg uh, friends, which we'll hear. A lot more on the on the upcoming solo albums. Yeah, it's it's okay. And uh, then uh, we end the first side with the uh, Stardust, uh, the older Hoggy Ho Core Mike Michael tune, in which uh, Paul arranges this himself, and it, it's a killer arrangement. But it it's an okay, okay version. But um, yeah, that's uh, especially when the the middle eight kicks in. You know that's. That's pretty nice. Then we flip the record with uh, the Fat Swallow tune, "Blue Turning Gray Over You." Uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a nice tune. Yeah, great, uh, good, vo great vocal from Ringo, double track. And uh, even though Ringo gets a bit crazy during the, uh, at the end of the song, you know, oh, stick it to me, ba da 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 da, just lock myself there. Um, then we go into Love is a Many Splendid Thing, thing. 
Uh, first was a hit by the four aces, yet this, uh, this was arranged by Quincy Jones, uh, a foremost Beatle fan, <laughs> uh, in, in case of what you heard uh, recently in the news. Um, yeah, it's a bit average. Uh, you know, I, th I feel that, you know, the backing singers are a bit too much. You know, they sing with Ringo throughout the whole song, yeah. It's, yeah. But, uh, then we go into Dream. Um, which uh, George Martin arranges is yet, yet I think uh, I think Ringo sings it way too low on this uh, on this song. You know, not uh, doesn't sound a bit right. You know, but uh, you know, it's okay. But um, and then we go into you always hurt the one you love. Uh, first was a hit by the Mills Brothers. Yet I love how it starts with those. With those loud, uh, those loud horns and and all that. And yeah, it's one of the better songs on the album. And then we go into "Have I Told You Lately That I Love You," uh, not to be confused with Rod Stewart's song. When and you know, come to think of it, you know, Rod Stewart would end up making a whole bunch of bunch of standards albums. You know, but uh, no, this is the uh, the old Bing Crosby hit, which uh, it sounds a bit. To my ears, sound a bit like a like a Spike Jones type of song, you know, with all those little interludes, you know, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and all that. And then we end the album with uh, "Let the Rest of the World Go By." Uh, it's another so-so song, but um, yeah. So, so that's the album. Um, afraid I don't have the the actual record with me, but uh, we'll cut to the. Uh, We'll cut to the front cover. Now, as you can see from the uh, front cover, this is the uh, the Empress Pub, which is located uh, at Ad Admiral Grove in Liverpool, where uh, Ringo uh, spent most most of his childhood uh, days. And towards the right, you know, those little uh, the little row of terrace houses. That's uh, that's where Ringo that's where Ringo lived. One of those uh, one of those houses. And uh, and if you could tell looking at the windows uh, is uh, Ringo's relatives and uh, there's Ringo as a mime on the left of of the building but uh, I believe it it was added a bit later you know maybe his face or the or the whole body or or something like that but um, yeah it's a it's a very lovely cover lovely photo and so so what do I say about this album well well, starting your solo career with a standards album is a, is a bit weird, but um, yeah, there's some great bits bits in here. You know, a few songs are, are okay, but overall, it's yeah, it's a bit of an average album. You know, not not too big, not too great. You know, so as far as ranking, I would give this uh, two Ringos, two Ringos out of five. So, there you have it, Ringo Starr's Sentimental Journey. My name is Todd Stepp, and uh, you just watched another Magical Mystery Review. And uh, join me again next time. Until then, toodaloo!